<clears throat> How you doing, Mr. Miller? What's news in your world, Mr. Miller? You're doing well? I'm doing well too. I should really be indoors working on some uh, photographic images, but I, I'm a, I'll do, Tim, I'll do. I'm just a little bit hooked on this pipe-making lock. Um, well, actually, I've got a wedding I'm working at tomorrow, so I guess I'm making up for it. So I won't be doing any pipes tomorrow, I don't think. I might have a little bit of time in the afternoon before I start, maybe. Good evening, Jordan. How are you doing? I saw your video earlier on. Very nice, very nice. Well done. Kudos to you for doing it again. I'm currently making this volcano. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of the shaping by hand. And this is one of my first non-filtered pipes. So this is a regular pipe. Countersunk that but it's um, going to be a non-filtered pipe. Let's see how that goes. That's how I fit it in, Tim. <laughs> Being busy all the time, I guess. That is exactly it. But truth be told, I do burn the candle far too much at both ends. Um, no, it's not good. I, I thank the Lord for the Sabbath at the weekend because it means I can just uh, zone out on the Friday night and on the Saturday. No, I didn't make the mouthpiece. At least not from scratch anyway. I honestly, honestly, honestly don't have the time to do the mouthpieces. Just based on what Tim just said, that's the honest truth. I just don't have the time. If I would do mouthpieces, I'd never get pipes out, you know. And I'm sure that, you know, with practice, I'll improve on the pipe, on things. But I'm just not uh, feeling the need at the moment, to be honest. Although you can't f claim realistically to have a fully handmade pipe if you don't. But, you know... I'm, I'm, uh, my pipes are selling, thank God, I'm happy, I'm grateful for that. Um, and, and I'm sure that will come in due course, you know, but right now, it, it makes sense for me to do it this way. Yeah, I mean, but the truth of the matter is, Jordan, I mean, that is true. But in the long run, you'll have had 40 pipes experience of making your own stems, whereas I haven't. So in the long run, when it gets to the journey of getting to whichever point you're going to get to, you'll have that experience under your belt. And I've got to be honest with you, I do, although they're not hand cut, but the actual finishing off bits... I do spend time on that to try and make it as comfortable as possible. Um, so I'm not going to say pretend that it's as good as a handmade stem. I mean, I'm sure there's handmade stems out there that are useless as well. But, um, you know, that uh, Danish pipe that I bought recently, uh, the Sven, uh, the La uh, sorry, the Lasse Skovgard uh, pipe, that's also made from a pressed stem. I mean, he makes handmade stems as well, but the range that I bought it from is uh, pre-molded stems. Sorry, internet connection connection is dodgy again. So I've just gone on. I'm using my data at the moment. 
hopefully that will be more reliable. Coming through okay now? Are we on? Are we ten four? They smoke so hot for you. Well, um, I would say that what you need to do, first of all, it depends on the briar, um, but don't fill the, the last third because obviously that's the thinnest part. So just fill it up to the where it's plenty thickness of the walls and you should be fine. Also, it depends on, on how much meat you leave on the stammer and I'm, I, I'm always careful to leave plenty on there. Um, and at the moment, let's see what I've got. just a very rough way of doing it. I've got about half an inch thickness underneath the bowl. Um, so if you've got lag, maybe just refresh it. Just close it down and restart it maybe. Sometimes you just need to refresh the connection. Hey Paul. I don't usually do this level of sanding by hand. This is a 180 grit, which is really, really low. And I'm actually shaping it with a, with a sanding paper. I usually do this on the wheel, but the shape is just unusual for me um, in, in this sort of raised and then tapered uh, shank, which I do like. Um, so that needs a little bit more personal attention. And this 180 grit, it's like a knife. It cuts amazingly. Just got to watch the end here. Because usually I'd have a, a stem matching up to that. So if I did hit it with the sandpaper, I'll just do it with the stem in place and then have it in line. But this one being a uh, like a army mount style, it doesn't have that. Right, I was actually in St James's today, Paul. But I just wasn't sure where you were at financially. I didn't want to push it. I didn't really make an issue of it. I was listening to the radio today. You know, there's a lot in the radio about this um, uh, child abuse. Um, there's a lot of, of it about at the moment on the radio. Um, I think it's after the Harvey Weinstein whole situation. Well, I definitely can't do tomorrow. I've got a wedding tomorrow that I'm working at. Uh, Paul, I'll give you another option, actually, come to think of it. Um, I can send you my uh, bank details. You can just pay the cash in. Seriously. I'll be fine with that. And as long as you trust me, that's fine.
Yeah, Paul. Um, I'll email you my details a bit later on. At least that way you know you're getting it and it's sorted. You don't have to rely on another meetup. Because honestly, I don't know when I'm going to be there next. No problem at all, Paul. Thank you. Anyway, so um, I've actually got two. Hi, Josh. I've, I've got I've got two videos on my phone waiting to be edited and uploaded. One of them is my day out. In St. Um, sorry about that. Are we on? Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, I'm really sorry because I'm using my data on the phone because the, the Wi-Fi is just not reliable and a call came through so it just cuts it out. So I'm really sorry. you have to bear with me. I need to make something a little bit more per uh, permanently reliable in the garage. I mean, it has been working fine, but I'm really suspicious about the British Telecom screwing up with my connection, to be honest. Yeah, so the videos that I was doing, thank you, Grobnob. So one of them was my day out in St. James's and a nice chat with George Frakes. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He works at JJ Fox's and he's got a great channel on IG. He's uh, He plays the guitar and he sings. He's, uh, you know, um, Swing Kid, uh, Swing Kid, whatever it's called, 100 or something like that. So he's into all the old sort of fashioned um i'm using a wi-fi booster pool yeah that's the only reason why i get any signal out here at all um so he's into the 20s the 1920s swing kids so this guy's maybe a little bit later maybe 30s that kind of thing but same kind of era um he dresses like that in the shop you know, when i get the video up you'll see it so i had a little chat with him on i had it on the video and uh, as, as usual a little bit in on the way home through town that kind of thing um, and then I did another video talking about this whole child abuse situation. And I was, I heard this really, really harrowing story on the radio. And it gutted me, it really did. I was driving and gripping the steering wheel through frustration. Um, I don't want to spoil the uh, thing. You'll see it when the video comes up. But um, just, the mind boggles at, Number one, the things that people are prepared to do to other people. And also the, the sort of the, the pure negligence of the police services sometimes. I, I don't want to tar them all with the same brush, but the story that this woman said was just harrowing. Hi, Tony. I'm going to get to finish this tonight because because I'm sanding it by hand. I'm going to have to go through all the, the grits. It's going to take me quite a while. But it is shaping up quite nicely. A non-filtered pipe, people. That's obviously going to get bent. Hopefully we'll get some decent grain as well.
Yeah, you're right, uh, Tim. That is the reason. At the moment I'm just trying to get this really nice flowing line on the heel. So that video, whenever it does go up, it's not one of like one of my morning drives, you know, debating questions and that. It's just really just getting it off my chest because I was literally so frustrated listening to that story. I get into the finer details, I will do it by hand. How are you doing, Leffa? You're rusticating some pipes. What kind of rustication do you do? I'm not absolutely concerned about this because I'm going to be rounding it off as well. Hey, seven early. Seven early, seven early. The naproxen. <clears throat> naproxen is actually a very good drug. I must admit, I do use that quite a bit, even though I try and stay away from any kind of uh, medication as much as possible. I always hold off as long as I can without it, but when I do need to take it, that stuff is good. It's potent. Hey, Paul Daniels in the house. My bed or your bed? See you, Mr. Miller. Um, Mike, what you might... Um, you, you do need to have food in your stomach before you take it, by the way. Um, before you take naproxen. It's, it's, um, it's like Nurofen. It's a much stronger version of Nurofen. And it will irritate your stomach if you don't have stuff in it. So always have something to eat and have a nice milky drink or something. Or a, a yogurt or something like that to line your stomach. And you may not suffer from that as much. And what you should also do is ask your chemist or your 
doctor to prescribe Laprazole or something like that, which will also help your stomach if it is irritated by that kind of medication. It does sound like acid reflux, yeah. But, um... But it's important to eat something before you take that medication. Lansaproz, yeah, I couldn't remember what it was called. I just gave it the best shot. <laughs> Trying to remember um, names of medication is like uh, a waste of time. Who dreams up these names? I have no idea. But I guess it's a combination of the different drugs that are in there. But Hey John, you're the font of all information, Grobnov. You're not just an ugly name. Said in jest, of course. them all as well. Jeez. What should I say? Moses. You're certainly taking a bit of a cocktail there. That's certainly not going to help your uh, acid reflux if you're taking all that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, Grobno. You do your job very well. Compliments to you. Ciao, Sandro. We have our resident musician in the house. Epicure 2 is good. How were they? How do they look? They look all right. They look healthy. Good color on the wrapper. I was in JJ Fox's today. I had a really nice Diplomaticos number two. Very, very tasty. And I've got a new Trinidad, which I've got to do a video for when I do smoke it. It's just come out. It's like a Robusta size, just shy of a Robusta size.
Yeah, it it sounds like it's they're much too young. Did you say they were from twenty nineteen? June nineteen, yeah. I'm afraid, especially uh, Hoy de Monterey's, they're quite light in flavour anyway, <clears throat> light in body. So you're not going to get the best out of them. I, I really wouldn't advise that you smoke them yet. I really wouldn't. Go wrong with a bit of 240. 240's where it's at. How you doing, GP? This is not pipe 100, this is pipe number 98. This is pipe 100. Don't she look pretty? Let's check out that bird's eye beauty. Ideas forming in my head for number 100, and as I said the other day, I may well skip over it because I want to take time over it, so I may well continue to 101 before I finish 100. I had a nice uh, interesting chat with Chris Asquith of Asquith Pipes. Um, trying to get some advice from him, and he's, he was very forthcoming, I must say. It's really very, very encouraging and warming when uh, people are prepared to share their knowledge and experience. The temptation not to is, is obvious. You know, you don't want people using your techniques that you've taken maybe years to learn. And then the guy comes along and you just give it to him on a plate. Ashton Bellicoso, okay. Is that um, a spicy kind of cigar? Yeah, absolutely, Jordan. Although there are some who I haven't really had much joy from, I must be honest. You know, they haven't been as forthcoming as you like, but overall, I've had very good experience, very good advice. Ian Walker from Northern Briars, very forthcoming, helped me out a lot. Um, Phil Rivara, big time. Hey Weaver. Some nice uh, bird's eye on there. Hopefully that will look nice once it's stained up. The other side is not as good, but it's pretty good. 
that should come up nice once it's stained. That sounds like a nice cigar, Paul. That sounds like you've got a sweet tooth as well. Much like myself. Um, I would uh, suggest that if you like that kind of cigar, I don't know if you've tried the Undercrowns, but uh, try the Undercrown, the Undercrown Maduro. That should give you a similar flavour profile. And that is much more reasonable priced cigar. And um, I think you can get them, I'm not sure. I think you can get them here in the UK. You've got to shop around the, the different websites. Undercrown Maduro. There's various different types of undercrowns. You've got the Undercrown Shade, the Maduro, the Sun Grown. Uh, but I think from what you've just said, probably the Maduro will sort, suit you the best. Yeah, I mean, go to JJ's or go to uh, Dunhill down the road. Um, just make sure that whatever you try has got two or three years age at least. You know, if you want to get a good appreciation of what the cigar should be like. You certainly don't want to have <clears throat> your experience by tasting one that's too young, too green. Hey David, welcome. Thank you for joining. Hope you're well. Well, it's a matter of taste, GP. It's not a question of um, what's the best, it's what's best for you. Um, I've been through stages where the, the shade I've preferred, and then the Maduro, and then the Sangram. It's a matter of what you prefer. It's like that with everything. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, that surprises me, GP, actually. I mean, I've had the Sangha and I don't recall having uh, issues with it. I've, I've been through... Um, I think I've been through a box of each of them. Of the Shade, the Maduro, and the Sangha. Um, and more latterly, I think the Sangha suited me better. I just found that the spiciness of it had a little bit more um, of a sweeter, Cuban-esque kind of flavour. But um, I recently had some Maduros which I had left in my humidor, which had been sitting there for a good couple of years, and it was beautiful. I never thought that age did great things for non-Cubans, non but it does. It really does. I've tried them once and I don't think I will do that again in a hurry. It was also a, a Drew Estates, I think, at the time. <clears throat> I think Art maybe sent me some and I, th I think I still have them somewhere. Um, they're not my bag, uh, flavoured cigars, don't like them at all. Hey Classical, how you doing? Dion?
Looking steady in the house. Welcome. How are you? I'm glad you caught this one. said I've got a wedding tomorrow so I'm not sure how far we're gonna to get tonight I guess tomorrow I'll upload those videos so there'll be some output even though it wasn't necessarily recorded tomorrow with a super glue again on, on my tackle my my camera is so heavily worn the um, you know the rubber padding which is around it around the grips well on the right hand side where the trigger is that whole region there just peeled off so I had to super glue it all the other day and um, and on the card compartment the bit that opens the the card flap the rubber on that also came off I had to super glue all of that um, it's falling apart, that's the truth. It's really being held together with superglue at the moment. I've, so much of it is superglued, it's ridiculous. Right, what was that? 240. Uh, 320, I guess, is next. through wedding seriously well if there is they should hire me to do the videos I'm good at doing videos whilst driving Billington? No, I haven't seen his. Uh, this is just a, a volcano shape, really. It, it's um, it's more a volcano than brandy to me, but I suppose it's just a matter of personal uh, preference. Shadow there. And if that's just the grain or if I've got a bit sticking up. How are you doing, Al? Thank you for joining. D750 and lenses. D750 was a good camera. They're all good these days. I'm a Canon man myself. I was tempted some years back to go Nikon, but I had so much invested in the lenses that I just didn't make sense. And they're all as good as each other these days, I think. Uh -huh. Oh, 
Well, anything's possible in America, right? Yeah, the full frame sensor was a real eye opener. My first full frame sensor was the 5D. Canon 5D and that was a, a groundbreaking camera I think in the wedding business. Vegas baby! I do not like this sandpaper, it's rubbish. You know something, sandpaper is ridiculously expensive. Absolutely ridiculous. Drive three funerals. <laughs> At the moment I'm up to 400, started off at 180. Yeah, that, that, that 320 was not quite that bad, but it was bad enough. So I just did a quick job of the 320 and I'm up to the 400. I might just have to work at it a little bit harder to get past that 320 grip. Hi Daniel, thanks for joining. I'm gonna have to get off soon. I've just realized I've got to pay the congestion charge and I've got about 12 minutes to do it. So I'll have to go in a few minutes. And I think I'll have to call it a night because as I say, I don't like leaving the fight at this stage. I really want to get an undercoat on tonight so that it can soak in overnight. So I'm gonna maybe motor on through to 600. If I can do that quickly, then maybe I can get the undercoat on. Ooh, getting out of breath now. No, I'm not smoking. I can't do it when I'm working like this at this frenetic rate. And once I go inside, I'll settle down with some uh, Orlick Golden Sliced. Finish off my coffee and go to bed. Decaf coffee at this time of night, of course. Is that still from your first box, uh, Tim? Or you bought them before? Again.
There you go, there's my reminder. Yeah, I'll buy a decent briar is not cheap. Right, you know what guys, I want to come back out and get the undercoat on. I'm going to go inside, I'm going to pay my congestion charge and come back out entirely up to you if you want to hang around. I'll leave it on, but uh, as I say, it's up to you if you want to hang around.
And we're back. Hope you didn't miss me too much. Hope I didn't offend anybody by not being here. Yeah, so that's the congestion charge. If you don't pay it, it's um, 11 pounds, I think it's 11 pound 50 if you pay on the day. I think, um, I'm not sure if you still have the next day. You used to have the next day. If you forget it, if you forget to pay it, you pay it the next day. And then it's, um, I think 14 or 15 pounds. And then if you miss it the next day, then it goes up to like 100 pounds. It's a mad, uh, it's a mad amount. How you doing, Mel? Right, at least the pressure's off so I can focus on doing it properly. So we're gonna go up to 600. Then I'm gonna have a, a give it a blast on the on the mop. And then we can get the undercoat going. Cheers, Al. No worries. Well, Mike, my philosophy has always been buy the best that you can afford. Flipping mouse in my garage. Get lost, mousey. Oh, as long as it's not a rat. Yeah, eat that. I guess it's cold for the mice too. I seriously need to spend some work on this garage. Or just make a new hut outside. No cat, no. We used to have a cat when we were kids. Surprisingly enough, I've been out here for pretty much um, over a year now, and I think it's maybe the second time that I've seen a mouse. I guess the noise deters them, but uh, still, I thought I would have thought I'd have seen more by now.
That's a good question. I don't really know if it's local bikes. I would have thought so, but I don't really know. I'm sure Tim will come up with the answer. No fee at all for motorbikes. That's a surprise. Probably less than half the weight there, Mike. <laughs> Fair enough, Tim. And there he goes with his lules, lulage. Oh, get lost, you stupid mouse. Oh, I'm getting angry now. I'm going to get my air pistol out in a minute. I'm pretty handy with an air pistol, am I? Better watch out, Mickey. You know what, I got that air pistol when I was a teenager. I can't remember for the life of me what it's called. It's out here somewhere in the garage. I'll have to find it. And it fires ball bearings, not pellets. That thing, if it still works, is about 30, it's over 30 years old actually, come to think of it. Yeah, you can get those things, I was thinking about that before, to plug in. Who knows if they work or not. We can't hear them, so we don't know. But if this cat next door scrams, maybe we'll know if it works. Do they? I have that on YouTube. Well, I suppose it'd be difficult to prove unless you had a pet handy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Are you still allowed to have air pistols? I'm going to put my hat on, it's getting a bit cold. If I start to get overrun, with mice, I'm out of here tonight. All right, I'm just going over to the uh, oh, what is that? Hey Piano, how you doing? Got a little bit of a ding on the top there, which is a pain in the neck. I'm gonna have to go down the grits now again. Let's see if I can get it with the 400. Alright, I'm just going to go into the buffer for a couple of minutes and then we'll get the undercoat on. So bear with, please. Mousy, stay out of it.
All right, we're on. Sorry about that. Just uh, somebody confirm if you can hear me. All good. Thank you very much, Jordan. Okay, so this is um, just using the mops just to smooth off the edges. It's got some nice green. It's better on the other side, but it's pretty good on that side as well. Nice green up on the edges there. And the heel will look very nice. That's a nice tight um, bird's eye there. Uh, so once that's stained up, you'll get to see all the lines between the bird's eye and all of that. It should look really nice. So what I do now is um, I sand it again, but with 800. So it just gives it a little bit more of a smoother edge. And then under the coat. So this 800, this 800, I don't actually use it to sand it per se. It's really just to take off that sheen put on by the mop. And just to reopen the pores of, of, and the grain. Once that's done, I can then do the undercoat. Nurse trying to be Jeremy Clarkson. I think he's fantastic. Yes, he's a very chauvinistic kind of presenter, but um, the shows that they put on, the budget those guys must have is just unreal. It's just unreal. It's very blokey. Yes, I agree. Sometimes it goes too far, but um, it's it's. I think it's one of the best programs ever devised by the BBC, even though it's not the BBC anymore. Um, but um, I think it's a phenomenal concept. You can't stand them. Yeah, I understand that. I do fully understand you. Um, but uh, the programs is just, I think they're amazing. And he's obviously being controversial. I mean, who knows what he's like as a on a personal level. But um, I think it's an unbelievable program. Just for the sheer audacity of the things that they do, the, the, the stuff all over the world, cutting up machines and putting them back together again, all that kind of stuff. It's just a, a, a motorhead's dream, really. I don't know, I've seen their um, their later version on whatever it's called, I can't remember what it's called now, the newer version. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was very similar, similar format, different location, but similar format, similar ideas, similar kind of adventures. Last of the summer. <laughs> well, even for people of that age, they seem to do a lot of high octane stuff. And Richard Hammond, oh, is he got a death wish or what?
and a back porch. I don't know about symmetry, but um, you know, it's all it's all in a, in a laugh. I mean, they're, they're taking the Mickey out of um, what's his name, the other guy. Can't remember his name. The geeky guy. And that's all just part of the whole um, charade, isn't it? All right, I think we're about ready for the undercoat. Hey, Newton Piper, how you doing? You're at work now? You know, when wearing gloves like this with fingers sticking out, I feel like what's his name? Old uh, the old geezer from um, oh, um, you know, he talks like that. Harold. Oh, did he? And on that bombshell, we'll start the undercoat. Step toe, thank you. My brain is terrible, I can't remember anything these days. Mickey, stay in the other section. This is my area, that's your area. You come in here, you come into my four cubits, your history. Dirty old man. Dirty, dirty old man, you. Yeah, that's a good program. I've never actually done a salt treatment, believe it or not. Believe it or not. My sacrificial stem, which isn't going to fit because this isn't 9mm, people. Can you believe that? This is not 9mm. This is a regular 3mm drill. This is like an army mount kind of thing. That's going to be bent. Not 9mm. So I can't even smoke it myself if I want to. So uh, how do I hold this? I don't want to get this mucky. That'll do, that'll do. Righty who? Oh, 
Oh yeah, Hancock's half hour, and now we're talking. If we're going to start going down nostalgic memory lane, when it comes to comedy, Forty Towers, Forty Towers, Hancock's half hour. Hancock's half hour was just something else. The Goon Show. These are all. The Goon Show was a little bit before my time. But I enjoyed them nevertheless. I went through a period when I just bought up bunches and bunches of BBC cassettes. So that's how old I am. And um, I just listened to that stuff back to back. I couldn't get enough of it. There was The Goon Show and then there was... Um, um, there was another one with Kenneth Williams and... Um, what was the other show? Uh, what was the other one with Kenneth Williams? Open All Eyes is also good, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember the other one with Kenneth Williams and... Um, Around the Horn, thank you, Grobnob. I think Around the Horn for me was probably my favourite one. There was a lot of innuendo in there, and um, for me it was just phenomenal. Rising Damp, also phenomenal. Yeah, Rising Damp was, was I enjoyed that. Carl, do you smoke non-filtered pipes as well? Because you're going to want this pipe. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. As Julia Roberts would say. Well, not Julia Roberts, the other girl. You smoke up? Oh yeah, good. Okay, fine. You're gonna want this pipe. Garen flipping teed. Mrs. Brown, who you're talking about. Mrs. Brown was good the first time. And it's a bit long in the tooth. It's all the same stuff. And it's all about uh, the Irish version of swearing most of the time. And it's just a little bit samey. And I think they've been wise not to bring it back. At least not yet. Mickey, stay over there. Hello, hello, it was. Yeah, I enjoyed the low, low as well. The low, low was very good. I never got into the detectorists. Yeah, I'm getting the stem dirty. Porridge, yeah, awesome. Love porridge. Absolutely love. Gratty. Mr. McCoy.
So basically this staining goes on until it's virtually opaque and then we let it dry. Soaks in overnight. Only fools and horses, yeah. Only fools and horses, brilliant. Not in the same league as, as some of the older stuff are for me, but very, very good. Still wish, you know, there'd be that kind of comedy around still. Is he still around, um, David Jason? Let's do it. Just about, yeah, I imagine so. Was it Bram Flakes? Weetabix? Trigger, he was funny. What Dave? What Dave? Bada bing. Funny how it's a completely different genre to American comedy. It's just a completely different beast, isn't it? Totally different style. And I think the Americans really do like the English comedies. There it is. That's almost black. You just gotta be patient with it and apply it and apply it and apply it. The last coat I don't burn, this one I let to dry naturally. Excellent English, I let to dry. Right, hopefully Mickey's not going to take a liking to my pipe overnight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to adjourn. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for your tolerance while I went out to pay my congestion charge. But it means I'll be able to buy another couple of blocks of briar because I didn't get a ticket for it. I've actually got a nice big order of briar coming in. I've got about 20 blocks coming in. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, basically what I'm doing most of the time is um, as and when I sell a pipe or two, I then go and spend money on briar. Um, but I, I kind of am making the pipe so fast that I need to keep uh, restocking. And uh, there's no chance for my PayPal account to build up. It just keeps on going straight out. That's the way it goes. But I'm not complaining. Dad's Army. My kids love Dad's Army. They really do. My 13-year-old, he loves it. He goes to sleep with it in his ear. All right, everybody. Mike, thank you very much. Tim, GP, rocking steady. Tam, hi Tam. Uh, Paul, Carl, Grobnob. Who else have we got here? Mark, oh Mark Walters, I didn't see you. How are you doing? Thank you for joining. I think that's it. I think that's it, people. Jordan, you still there? Thank you very much. Back porch piping, thank you very much. Who else didn't I mention? Anybody else there? Mel, if you're still lurking in the background, concentrate on the road. All right, hang on, before you go, Mike, I'm going to take a quick look so I can give you your answer straight away. 
Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> yeah, they look all right. They look all right, I think. Yeah, they just need to be left, Mike. You just need to leave them. Uh, what date did you say it was? Boca, how you doing? We're just uh, signing out, uh, signing off, Boca. Sorry. Everybody say goodnight to Mickey. Thanks, everybody. I shall have a couple of videos up tomorrow. Um, one of them is, as I said before, is going around uh, St. James's, popping into JJ Fox's today. And the other one is that chat, which I was talking about, that whole child abuse situation, which was, as I say, just repeating a really harrowing story that I heard. So there we go. Night all. Thanks very much. Catch you on the next